Kingdom greetings to my global family. So good to be in the house of the Lord. We serve the God that is over all. We thank God he conquered all. And he's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. Beside him there is none other. He's sovereign, he's almighty, he's majestic, and he's eternal. He is the same God. And we give him praise, we give him glory, and we give him honor. That's right, you just bless his name. And welcome to our online family as well. We really want to invite you to come and join us. Uh, there are things um, that happens in this house that you will not be able to see online. So you got to come in. I want to invite you to come join us. 9 a.m. every Sunday at the corner of Balthazar Street and Eastern Main Road in Tunapuna. That is in Trinidad. Just to let you know. Praise God. Well, the subject I'm looking at today is it's really, it emerged from a very popular portion of scripture. But God always says something to us in this house that is unique for this house. And for those that are listening online, it's not by chance. So I want to look at the subject, Lord, at your word. And the objective is, I will do it. Lord, at your word, I will do it. Lord, at your word, I will do it. So Father, we give you thanks, we give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor. And we thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die on Calvary's cross. That you sent him and he was willing to do it even though he said, Lord, if this cup can pass from me. And then he said, not my will, but thy will be done. Because he saw the joy that was set before him. He saw me, he saw you, he saw us. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to receive from you in this manner. We thank you, oh God, for the unveiling of your word, the revealing of revelation. We thank you for feeding us what we need today. We bless you and we commence this time into your hands. Have your divine way. God, we intend for you to get the glory, the honor, and the praise because you deserve it. And we pray this through your son, Jesus the Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, we agree and we say amen and amen. Praise God. We want to look at Luke. So we'll be looking at Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 6. Literally, we're going to be talking about Luke chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. But I just want to focus on 1 to 6 today, so you can call this part 1. And Luke chapter 5, verse 1, it says, So it was as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret. Luke chapter 5, verse 2 says, And so... Two boats standing by the lake, but the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Now this account speaks about Jesus actually meeting the multitude and sitting. Uh, he, first he was on shore and he noticed that two boats were empty and the fishermen were washing their nets. And he decided to intervene and divine intervention is necessary. And when we look at just from verse 1 and verse 2, we can see regardless of what you see Jesus doing with others or in others, you can rest assured that he is watching you also. That he was minding his business. He was on the shore. He was getting ready to release the word. And he saw, he noticed two boats empty. And when he looked beyond that, he saw the fishermen washing their nets. So it might appear if you are the side of Jesus that he might have missed you, but he can be right where he was and still be right where you are. Because he's God and he's that kind of God. He sees when you stop and he steps in and propels you into action. If you are dormant, something ignites on the inside of you so that you can be propelled forward. So that you can move and experience divine movement. But he saw something that got his attention because it was not something that was, was you know, unfamiliar. Once you're finished in the ocean, you're finished in the sea, then you have nets, you place nets in, it's, it's supposed to be washed after 
Because the fishermen were washing their nets. So it, to me it wasn't a big deal. But I think Jesus saw beyond what they were doing. He saw why they were doing it. So when you look at a situation, we might look at each other and see what we are doing. And what another person is doing. But Jesus sees the why we are doing it. And he steps in, not just because of the what, but because of the why. I'm going somewhere with this. That procedure uh, of washing the nets being done was, uh, it was because of, while in the water, the nets would have collected a lot of unwanted things. And sometimes in our lives, while you're in the water, while you're going through life, you end up collecting some unwanted things. You go for one thing, but you end up collecting other things. Sometimes you draw other things to you. And the thing that you have to catch the thing that you want is filled with things that you don't want. So, so Jesus saw the why they were watching their nest. And I want to encourage somebody today. He knows you're doing it. He knows what you're doing. But he sees what man cannot see. He sees the why you're doing what you're doing. And he's concerned about you because he loves you unconditionally. So he goes after the why you're doing what you're doing. While others judging you for what? He says, I love you for why? Because I need you to come out of the why you're doing what you're doing. Because what you're doing is as a result of why you're doing it. I feel like preaching this thing. But I really want to teach a little bit. So Jesus must have perceived the disappointment and the desperation in their hearts. You see, Jesus didn't come here to look at boats. He didn't come to look at nets. He's a man of the heart. So he sees your heart. That's why you can't judge people. You might see somebody going through something, going through a situation. And you judge them because of the what you are seeing. But God loves them because he understands the why. And some of you this morning, there's a why. You are the way you are. There's a why. You're behaving the way you're behaving. There's a why. You're not doing what God said to do. There's a why. You're falling. There's a why. You're in sin. There's a why. You're only in error. There's a why that you're frustrated. There's a why. And God says, I'm interested. Because if I could fix your why, I could fix your what. If he fixes your why, then your what would be controlled. And for this house, we need to understand that judgment belongs to God. So all these people that were there, they must have been thinking the same thing as like, oh gosh, Simon and they didn't get through, they didn't GT today. They didn't get through. But they were doing what they were accustomed to doing. They were washing their nets, but the why this time is what got Jesus' attention. And in verse 3, it says, then he got into one of the boats. Look at his concern. He went into the vessel that was seemingly abandoned to hold what it was supposed to hold to satisfy the fisherman. I can pause right there and let you know that sometimes you pack up your praise. You pack up your worship. Sometimes there's a shift in your mentality. You don't want to hear about this church thing. You don't want to hear about God thing. You know what? And God just steps right in there. I said, I got use for this. But I just don't want to use this. I want to use you in this. Because I provided the this. So that I can use you in it and for it to be a blessing to you. So in verse 3 he says, Then he got in to one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. In other words, uh, we took close to the sand. I want you to push me out a little bit in the water. You see, Jesus was setting things up for the greater. Sometimes you're in, a, in the sand, but what you need is in the water. Hallelujah. So sometimes if he comes in and he sees you're too much on the sand, you're too much on the shore, he said, push it out a little. In other words, I got something for you to do and leave the rest up to me. 
I'm going somewhere. So, 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 so. And, and, and he said, it continues, and he, he sat down, sorry. He sat down and taught the multitude from the boat. He turned the whole boat into KRI's platform. He'd be like that. He'd be like, I need somewhere to preach. I need somewhere dry. I ain't got no sand. Oh, come on, somebody. I need somewhere where I can sit. You see, the power that Jesus carries, he could lie down, be asleep in a boat, and still function. So the multitude was waiting, and he was, he was setting up something because he went into Simon's boat, and, 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 and he preached from the place that they left. God will use where you once were to bring you right back to where you're supposed to be. So, 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 watch this, watch this. And he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. I just love Jesus. I'm done with the boat. I ain't catch nothing. I'm done with it. As far as I'm concerned, he ain't got no use anymore. And he says, nah, I've got use for the boat. I've got use for the thing that I've placed on the inside of you. I've got things to help to propel you as my vessel. To function effectively on the earth as a golden vessel. One that is full and useful. I've got use for what I've set on the inside of you. Don't you dare discard your vessel. Are you hearing me? Don't look at it as though you're done. It's not over until he says it's over. And the kind of God he is, he's continuous. So what looks like over for you is just a continuation for God. Are you with me? Verse 4 says of Luke 5, When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And I know you heard this and this was preached all up and down. But let me tell you something. There, is, there are some things that we need in this house. And those of you listening online. When he had stopped speaking, he said to Simon, I'll be like, how could you stop and still say? So, so, so what I'm seeing here. When he stopped addressing the multitude, he focused on you. There's an assignment for a multitude and there's an assignment for an individual in the multitude because each individual have their own assignment to bring the thing together. There is synchronization, there is wholeness and then there's an explosion and God gets the glory because he not understands one can put a thousand but two can put ten thousand in flight. So the atmosphere was set for one man. But others benefited. When God wants you, you could be right here as you are today. And you alone could hear this word and receive it. Believe it. You might just be the one person. Because I'm talking to the multitude. But you are taking heed. Why? Because now I'm focusing my attention on you. It says here, when he had stopped speaking, he said... You tried to explain that to a child, but, but, but mommy, daddy, how come you could stop speaking and still say, Jesus can do it? How can he do it? Because the context shifted. He, he, he knew that the multitude had a need. But because his plan was to use Simon, who was later known as Simon Peter, because he knew what he had in store for him, there was a whole forum set up just to get his attention. And he would use the very thing that he thought was messed up to bring him back in right alignment. Listen, don't give up on yourself. I don't give up on God. Whatever you thought you failed in before, you look again. Because there are things that God is going to do, hallelujah, to bring you right back to the place where you're going to spring forth. You're going to break forth. You're going to go forth without limits in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So when he has stopped speaking, he said to Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. He didn't himself say, hello, Simon. He didn't say, Simon, I, I, I know 
because I'm Jesus, you know, I'm just saying, I know that you had a rough time and all of that, but let me just try to encourage you a little bit. This is what I want you to do. Come in, Simon. Come into the boat. Let's go out. Jesus, I don't time for no. Pat you on your shoulder. You went straight to the point. Simon! Yo, Simon! Straight to the results. Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And I want to look at a few things here. It was, it was so, I started to reflect on my life and I'm saying, but God, there are times when I really try to understand how you function because I'd be like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, Father, do, do, do. And he'd be like, ah, do, 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 do. launch out into the deep. I got we just head into that dry so. Launch out into the deep. Where you are located is not deep enough to manifest the power of God in your life. Where you are currently positioned, God, and listen to me carefully because from this week you're going to get it. God will shift you. Because you're hearing the word today. Prepare yourself. The best is on his way. The best what? I'm glad you asked. The, bless, the best trial? The, ble, the, be, the best testing? Oh, look at you clapping. I can tell now. Look at you all excited. Huh? Nobody excited? You see, you need the best of that to bring out the best of God in you. And the best of God is greater than what you think you're going through right now. Because your purpose is greater than your pain. Launch out into the deep. He knows what the deep has for you, but he also knows what the deep will do for you. He didn't ask him to launch out into the deep and then go into the deep. He said, you launch out and then I will show you what I want you to do. When you reach the deep, he said, I want you to let down your nets for the catch, for a catch. In other words, when you reach the deep, you don't have to dive, you see. That's the issue. We look at things from an earthly perspective and we earthalize things and we don't understand the supernatural phenomenon. We don't understand what God is saying and what he's doing. We don't look into the spirit realm. you would be like, well, God said to go out into the deep and you decide to dive out of a boat and you never swam in your life. And call it a pastor? No. No. Because as, as good as I can swim, I ain't coming out there in the deep. I'm going to pray from the shore. Father, teach him how to walk on water. So he was like, launch out into the deep. This is after speaking to a multitude. You just switch up like, Simon. So I was like, uh, uh-huh. Launch out into the deep. Now remember, these guys were out fishing all night. So they might have been a bit fatigued. Sleepless night. Plus, they were still going at it. They were washing their nets. And if you know about the nets, they, they find holes and you have to put things out, not just wash it down and you have to shake it out and the nets are not light. So he was, you know, putting out a lot more and Jesus just went, okay, he spoke to the multitude and he just went, Simon launched out into the deep let down your nets for a catch. And Simon, let me just say, there are a few things I was able to extract from this before I got to Simon's response. It was, let me just say it this way. After what must have been a, a faith word, because it never stated what Jesus preached. Then he spoke to Simon. So I'm thinking, Knowing who I am and how I am, I've known myself all my life. Knowing that if Jesus was coming with that thing next, Michelle, launch out into the deep, let down your nets. I would be preaching a faith message. You understand what I'm saying? To boost your faith. But the thing is, the truth is, I can't add to the word of God. It is not written here what Jesus preached. So let's just assume it was a message about building your faith. And you know, after you repent and you accepted him. And all that he can do for you and all of that. He set the things up. But when I looked at this, I looked at a few things well. I looked at the person. The person. Jesus addressed Simon specifically. 
And today God is talking to a person. Today God is talking to a person. The other thing I saw is that he used the vessel. He was already positioned in Simon's boat. Metaphorically speaking, the vessel, the thing that was left abandoned, that was left empty for a period of time, he stepped in. The other thing I saw was the trajectory. He said, launch out into the deep. He gave some instructions. He didn't say how far in to go. He just said, launch out into the deep with the understanding that Simon knew what the deep was from what the shallow was. You see, God don't tell you something that you don't know already know. Sometimes you don't know what you know. And when you don't know what you know, you just don't know that you don't know what you know. And then you know what you know that you don't know that you know that you know what you don't know. Write it down. You just don't know. So, but he knows. He knows all things. So in order to become dynamic, you must become specific. In order for you to stand out, you need to stand up. In order for you to stand up, you need to stand out. Do you understand what I'm saying? In order for you to move forward, you need to step out. After you stand up, stand out, you need to step out. You need some dynamics in your life. He was specific. He said, Simon, and today he's calling your name. I said, today he's calling your name. Trust and obey Jesus. Jesus' instructions, trust and obey him. Do exactly what he said. Even when it just doesn't look. He, he, I looked at the instructions. He said, let down your nets. If you're calling fishermen out in the deep. You don't have to tell them to let down their nets. It should be understood. But because in their minds, in Simon's mind, his season for the catch has passed. Jesus just knew he had to say to him. What you think I'm calling you for is not what it is. I'm not calling you to just take a ride on the boat with me in the ocean. I'm calling you to retrieve what you left. I'm calling you to go back for restoration. I'm calling you to go back to claim what was there all the time for you. But I need you to bring with you that which you need to fit the thing in and carry it with. I need a vet. I need a person. I need a vessel. I need your obedience. You need to listen to my instructions. Let down your nets. In other words, prepare for the catch. You know, like how to you some you long ladies, they're doing everything possible for the catch. And then they get catch, not catch. Mm, atmosphere. <laughs> and some of you young, young men as well, you do it, you know you do it. You're all dandy, all of a sudden, you crawl, just go next level. You know? And you're like, this time the lady don't even want no man crawling, want a man strong and tall. And you'll be like, well, how come I go? She playing hard to get no, she ain't like you looking like you're deformed. Just saying. We need to get this thing right. We need to align ourselves in God. We want, you want to know who you are? Check him out. Your identity is in him. Are you with me? So prepare for the catch. It's an hour of victory. You can afford to miss this. I'm learning. If you miss a season, you still have an hour. You see, seasons change. So within that change, something could still happen to you. It's better for you to grab what you can, to retrieve what you can, to extract what you can in the season that you're in. But because of the mercies of God, if you miss that season, there is still an hour of victory, an hour of restoration. Within that period, you can still get what you need to get. It might just take you through a different pathway. The process might be a bit different. Then I looked at the purpose. The purpose was for a catch. God is so well structured, so well organized. And this thing he said here is the person, the vessel, the trajectory, the, the instructions, the purpose. Everything was in that statement right there. So if we stop for a minute and look at the word of God, you see, some of you just, you read a scripture verse and it just sounds good. You just get what you think is the gist of it and you move on. But you listen carefully. You will hear all this in there. 
Who he's talking to, what he's about to do, what he's going to use, where you should, where you should go, how far, how long, where you should stay. Everything is right in the instruction. The purpose for it is always there. Always. Always. In verse 5 of Luke 5 it says, But Simon answered and said to him, Master, talk about reverence. So that means he was cognizant. He, he had a knowledge that this was Jesus. He said, Master, total respect. Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. I, I can understand this. To me, this was quite reasonable. But then I got a little confused. You said, Master, and then you had to... You felt as though you, you needed to give an explanation. You said, Master, and yet you had to, you know, make Jesus understand, well, I'm the professional here. You're a carpenter. I, I know you're Jesus and everything, but I, I don't know how much you know about fishing. You know, like how some people would say like, but Jesus didn't go through this because they never read that. And, and you are now convinced by the devil that he doesn't understand. And he don't know, but you know, I don't even think God understands what I'm going through. And even if he understands why he's not doing something about it, but he's always doing something about it. As a matter of fact, he don't do something about it. He does something about you. And he gives you what is necessary. Everything pertaining to life and godliness so you could fix the it. Because God don't have to work in the it if he has given you everything to fix it. Are you with me? Everything that's necessary to fix it. So Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. I want you to hear me here, saints, kingdom citizens and ambassadors. Don't get caught in the fact that you caught nothing in one particular season. Don't get caught up with that. Don't make that your end all and your be all. Don't put a, put a full stop where there's supposed to be an ellipses. Don't do it. Dot, dot, dot. There is always more. So Simon was there and he was like, I don't think he was being rude. But as man, he had to say something. I, I, think, I think night and, you know, catching nothing was a kind of let down for him because he accustomed doing this. So he had to make it clear, it's not for lack of trying, you know. Jesus, I just want you to understand. I sometimes we approach God like that. Father, you, you, you don't understand. I had to do this. I know it was wrong, but I just felt I had to do it. I know I'm talking to somebody. I, I, I wanted to get through faster, so I had to drive on the shoulder. I, I had to cut the line. I, I had to use someone's credit card without them knowing. I had to, I had to borrow someone's husband or spouse. I had to, I had to just, it was just temporary, God, because I had a need. I was feeling so lonely. I was feeling so sad. I just, God, but you know, that's not really me. God, my reason, because I felt I had to, and I know your, your understanding. I know, I know, I know you're loving and, uh, mm, mm. See, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. So give me a minute to explain to you that I've tried. Give me a minute to explain to you that I'm not watching my net in vain. And Jesus is just looking at him and is like, what? But as he released his words to Jesus, the words that Jesus released overrules and override his words to the point where Simon came to a place where he said, never the less at your word, I will let down the net. Now, it depends on how you see yourselves. It depends on how you see God. You can see a little attitude in there or you can see great humility or you can see, well, let's try it if you say so. You tell me how you're seen and that will help me to understand your relationship with God. Because many have spoken about this passage of scripture. And you would hear the different personalities, they like to call it, coming out. But all it simply says here, because for me, he said, Master, 
We have toiled all night and caught nothing. I thought he just wanted Jesus to know. I understand that you are master. Because quickly, right after he says, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. The respect that he had for the word of God. Unfortunately, the church has lost that. The reverence that he had for the word of God, the church has lost that. But I declare we shall come back to that place of holy reverence for the word of God. When we hear the word of God, when we read the word of God, when we study the word of God, when the word of God is presented, that we will have reverence for it and we will take it, hallelujah, and apply it to our lives so that we can live the way we ought to live and give God the glory, give him the honor and give him the praise because he deserves it. I, I declare that, especially this house and those of you online, we shall come back to that place of reverence for the word of God, a place where we can say, never the less, at your word. I will. That I might perhaps maybe. Or let me think about it. You know how we like to negotiate with God. Big time negotiations. Ne negotiations going on. We like to nego negotiate with God. And you know tell him our side of it. And expect him to work with that. Ouch. If you can't say amen. I'm hearing the ouch. I'm hearing it. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Simon was a well-experienced, skillful fisherman. Therefore, after toiling all night and catching nothing, it, it, he wanted it to be known. And I'm saying this again because I need you to understand that I sense that this is what happens with most believers, most kingdom citizens. You intend, you want God to know what he already knows. So while he is yet speaking, you are trying to explain and you miss what he's saying so that you can overcome. Prayer is not you just telling God everything. And some of you heard this before, you know it, but I got to say it again. After you have released, then you need to shut up and listen. Let me be a little nice. Then you need to be quiet and listen. Because it's supposed to be that kind of relationship. Are you, are you hearing me? He was tired. But he had knowledge. He had knowledge. Are you with me somebody? So it's important for you to understand. You have to be persistent. But I understand and I've learned that persistency only begins when you feel like giving up. People just say to me, girl, you're very tenacious, you have tenacity and you're very persistent. But when I check it out, you cannot judge me as being persistent while I am in my best state. It's when I'm at my worst and I feel like giving up and I just decided to still show up in my life. Because some of you are not showing up in your life. Other people are showing up in your life for you. And they're telling you what to do. Yes, well, leave him there. Leave her there. Go this, do that. Quit that job. Girl, you don't need to go to school. Boy, you, you don't need an education. You don't need just go. God gave you a gift. And people showing up in your life for you. And then you come in for prayer because you, you, you're discombobulated. You don't know what to do. Seek the Lord for yourselves and show up in your life. Let him show up in your life. Are you with me? So persistency only begins when you feel like giving up. Don't confuse being consistent with being persistent. Because you can be consistently going through a situation and then one day give up because you can't, you don't know how it is, what it's like to be persistent. Are you with me? So you are consistent. People say, well, wow, you're strong. But then one day they realize you're in hospital because you tried to take your life. You, you don't mix up the two. While you're being con con consistent, you call on God. So he will help you to be persistent. Are you with me? What Simon said and did caused him to experience manifestation of victory and abundance. You have to understand your action will produce something. You need to understand your words are going to produce, they're going to frame a thing. And you're going to have to live through that thing, through that framework. Your words, your actions. You have to understand that 
in every situation if you don't see it from the place of the results of you if you don't see it through the eyes of God and you only see it through your eyes then failure is imminent in the context of you not involving God in what God is already in because he's in he's in are you hearing me don't get distracted with this word you know don't let the enemy steal this one from you don't let it leak out either too many leaking believers you believe but the word leaking out so you're struggling Simon firstly addressed Jesus as master how do you see Jesus when you have caught nothing when you got nothing in a season how do you see him how do you call him do you just go oh God you know it have a way we go before him when we realize we caught nothing that a whole season passed how many months passed in the year already and you were expecting certain things to happen how are you addressing God how are you going before him how do you see him Simon said master after a long night after an empty boat after a dirty net after strength gone he still saw Jesus as master how do you see him today in your life and in your situation so he, he displayed when you look at Simon he he displayed so much well first he had the knowledge and the recognition and he displayed reverence and obedience in your situation, whatever you're going through, if you can't see God, if you don't know that he's the same God, then you will struggle to reverence him. You will struggle to obey him. Are you hearing me, saints? Are you hearing me, kingdom citizens? Simon said, nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. Lord, at your word, I will do it. I pray this prayer over your life today. That in the midst of your situation, when there is nothing going on, or everything that's going on just seems to be messed up, seems to be hurting you, seems to be frustrating you, that you can still lift your voices. Look onto the hill, but for when come it's your help. Your help comes from the Lord and you say, Lord, that's your word. I will do it. What is it? I will do whatever you want me to do. I will do what doesn't make sense. Because I'm experienced. And I know fish will only come out and be active at night and early in the morning. But once the sun comes out on the water, the surface begins to warm up and get hot. They go deeper. So I know in the natural realm, this is not making sense, but God, Lord, that's your word. I will do it. As foolish as it looks. Because the other dudes who are looking, it's like, where's Simon going, boy? Like he's real frustrated. Hey, the man going back out, boy. And this hot sun, because it was morning. Some of you don't like our son. So like when I saw the rain falling this morning, I was like, oh, here we go. Here we go. 15 minutes of rain. Uh, Apostle, it flooded in San Juan and I live a Rima, so I don't think I can come. Mm -mm -mm. But God. But God. In this case, son. Some of you would be like, mm -mm. a dark enough. But I don't have an umbrella. And I ain't going in there all sweaty. Especially I had my hair done yesterday. And I'm wearing MAC makeup. And we got all these excuses. But here is Simon looking like a fool. An experienced fisherman. Something you just need to look like a fool. Don't act like one. Because people always see the what. But they can't see the why. 
They don't know why you're doing what you're doing for God regardless of how it looks. Oh, come on, somebody. You see, some of you need to get up from your blessed assurance and just march forward and do what God says. With the understanding that it looks crazy and stupid and foolish and dotish in the eyes of mankind. But when God gives you the catch, you will still call some of those that are looking around and say, Come, I got enough. I got overflow to share with you. Amen. When you're trying to tell me, you're not doing it because of how it looks. You're not doing it because of how you look in the eyes of people. God's got a plan for you. He's got purpose for you. And I look through the scripture and I realize he, he calls some people to do some foolish looking things. Some pretty silly things. And I'm like, how do you go to the, the, the ocean? You go to the Red Sea and you lift up a rod, lift it up, stretch it out and stretch it over. Who does that? Picture me going by maracas. I, I want to I wanna go on the water, go to the water to go to Las Cuevas and I'll be like, Pick up this rod, and you're watching me. You be like, okay. I said, she's gone now. She's lost it altogether. And I lift it up. Now, if God says to do it, it's going to be done. But if I just try to mimic what's there, without the presence of God, without the power of God, without the uh, preservation of God, without the authorization of God, I would look as though I'm picking up a stick, and that's the end of it. And I look crazy. Do you understand what I'm saying? But if God says it, and you're watching, you will see the manifestation of the power of God, not in the picking up on the stick, in the why you can see me doing what I'm doing. There's a why I did it, because at his word, I will do it. There's a why that you see me acting the way I'm acting. There's a why that you hear me saying what I'm saying, because it's at his word, Lord, at your word, I will do it. They're laughing at me. I'm building this ark. They're laughing at me because they have never seen rain. Why am I building something for something that no one, including me, have never seen? Because there's a why. Because there's a why. Do you understand this? There's a why that Jesus sees. He saw the why. Simon was watching his net. He saw the why. The other guys were just washing their nets. He saw the why. But he didn't call the other guys. Guys, he called Simon. And later on, you will see why. As we go through this, I don't know if it will be a series, but we'll see. And in Luke 5 verse 6, it says, And when they had done this, they caught a great number of fish, and their net was breaking. My God. And when they had done this, I want you to say, open your mouth and say, Lord, at your word, I will do it. And you begin to listen to all that he has said for you to do. And even today, he'll be saying some things for you to do. And tomorrow you'll be hearing, keep listening to what he wants you to do. And stop thinking that you're here, just taking up space and the air on the earth. He has a plan for you. It's a good plan. One with an established end. This is so comforting to me. Because sometimes I see myself so undone. I'll be like, God, for real? Me? He's like, yeah. He's like, you're sure? He's like, yeah. I think, why me? He's like, why not you? I've been with you throughout. I've seen everything. I also know what's coming. And the more you trust me, the more you align yourself with me. You will see the manifestation of my unconditional love and my power, my grace and my mercy. Yes, you. Yes, you. I chose you. Because I have a plan for you. I have purpose set on the inside of me. Yes, you. 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 Yes, you. You see, Jesus will support his word with his power. He will support his people with his presence. His power isn't there as well, but it's in his presence we get the manifestation of his power. So we always have full support because he promised you'll never leave us nor forsake us. Jesus stepped into Simon's boat and he gave instructions from there. What you discard, he can still use. Where 
And you think the time is up? He says, I, st- I can use you. When you think your gift seems a bit, a bit irrelevant, uh-uh. he said, go. But go a little deeper. More prayer. More prayer. More prayer. More prayer. Increase your faith by not receiving the doubts. Not what people are saying, what you are saying to yourselves. Adjust your mentality. There's a, there's a cognizant factor that, that is, is messing with you. Where you are cognizant of your past because you're familiar with your past. He said, I want you to trust me with what you don't know. Just believe. Just believe. Spirit is faster than mine. So Jesus sat. He sat and he, t- he, he taught. The place that they left, the place that Simon and they left, and I can understand, you know, because I'm looking at this, I'm saying the boat had its purpose. In order for them to wash their nets, they had to leave the boat to go to the shore so that they can wash the nets, closer to the shore so they can wash the nets because the nets, if they keep it in the deep, it's going to keep collecting unwanted things. And some of you are washing your nets in the deep. So you're getting tired because the more you wash, it's the more things that come in. So I understand they had to go to take out the things that were not useful to them. And today I believe God is saying you got to remove the things from your net that's not useful. You got to remove the things from the net that can cause a hindrance for your catch. You got to remove the things from your net that can cause you now to slow down instead of pressing forward. You got to remove the things from your net. Now, now I heard some preachers that they spoke about don't cast your net yet and you know or don't uh, wash your net yet and I agree with that as well because there are seasons where you have to ensure that the net is in the right place what am I saying that your praise is always where it's supposed to be your worship always where it's supposed to be and that is in every season by the way not just one season and you have to understand that but then the purpose for what Simon was doing had to be addressed by the why he was doing it so even if you find yourself washing your your net when you should still be out there because you don't have the knowledge Jesus must step in and show you it from a perspective of the spirit realm where the thing doesn't look possible in the natural realm but he wants you to shift because it's a spiritual matter I was sharing with someone recently you're handling this matter in a fleshly realm but it is a spiritual matter it's always a spiritual matter first always but we have been trained to attack each other, to handle things at this earthly surface level before we go to God first. Seeking God first, his kingdom and his righteousness is not about things. It's about that position that you place him in your lives. So what is discarded, what is put aside until another time, Jesus sits in it. He will sit and watch you have missed he will sit in what you have left behind he will sit my god and teach you from that place so that you can recognize there are things right where you were that were yours and you left too soon you left some people quit because we have been trained to quit am i talking to anybody here we have been trained to quit Everything. That's why your first answer is no. Or your first word sometimes is no. Say dada, no. Mama, no. But we know if you say say mama, they they would say dada. Most children. But that, that first word is no. Why? Because you hear no, don't touch that. No, don't go there. No, don't do that. No, 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 no. no. Train. Yes, as a matter of fact, when it's time to say yes, we say mm-hmm. It sounds funny. Think about what I'm saying. 
You hear no. But yes, right now yes is an emoji. Because if they went for mm hmm, to just putting a tick, and you just see a tick means yes. You understand what I'm saying? We have to be very mindful. When you obey the voice of Jesus and the word, success, your success is imminent. I'm a living witness. People called me and they would tell me, girl, you have crazy faith. Just recently I did a program for someone online and they were telling folks that I just have crazy faith. But I, and I used to say to myself, it's crazy faith. It's not just crazy faith. I just, I don't believe myself. No, I believe in the God in me. Because me by myself, mm -mm. not good. Not good at all. But the God in me, I believe. Because of him, I'm transformed. Because of him, I can function in my newness. Walk in my newness, in my new state, in a right frame of mind. After trying to take my life three times in my life, my God, I can't depend on me to make decisions for me. I mean, have I lost my mind? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is not a joke. I'm serious. You got to depend on the God in you. So that means you must ensure that you have God in you. And that he resides in you. So as I looked again at their results, I saw the power of obedience at work. I saw the power of obedience of the word of God. I saw uh, the power of obedience uh, to Jesus being present. That's why he said, nevertheless. And we're going to lift our voices and say, Lord, at your word, I will do it. I will praise even when it seems difficult. I will push. I will do what I need to do. God, it's not always easy. But God, you're worth it. You see, Simon had to go beyond his present mentality. He had to go beyond his present uh, reality. And he had to find a place in Jesus for stability. He had to move from hearing the words of his Inf the information he had hearing the words of his past hearing the words of the, his experience let me tell you something some of you listen to your experience more than you're listening to God your experience talks to you there's a conversation that happens if I say come and do this no 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 um, my grandmother said and my grandmother used to and my grandfather used to. You take their experience. You live through it. You get the same experience. And now you're telling me if I come to you with change. No, my experience speaks louder than the voice of God that is coming through you, Apostle. Wait a minute. Let me just check with my experience. Because Simon, Simon was experienced. But Simon was also intelligent. He was tired, but he wasn't foolish. He was a bit fatigued, but he wasn't fast out of the place. He'd be like, nevertheless, at your word, at your word, I will let down my neck. You see, the difference between faith and foolishness is whether God said anything about it. Because what looks like foolishness, if God spoke, that makes the difference. Are you with me? That's why you should be saying amen because some of you have been acting the fool. Because God said nothing about it. But if he said something about it, then you could go ahead and build an ark. Do you understand what I'm saying? You can go ahead and throw water on wood and expect fire. You can go ahead and say, hey, we're in Bowen. And let them throw you in the fire. You can go ahead and open your window and still pray. Ain't nobody business that they're trying to tell you to stop praying. They can't stop your prayer. They can't stop your praise. They can't stop your worship. You, your worship, you pray. You can't stop. Can't touch this. Can't do it. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
So you, you have to align yourself accurately and say, Lord, at your word, I will do it. Regardless if it costs me my life, I'll do it. And Jesus, Jesus, <laughs> Jesus got fish. I don't know if you remember. Because it says here um, that th their nets, I mean, it was like, it was like they had a lot of fish. Their nets were breaking. Y'all remember that? So, so Jesus, Jesus got fish to come towards the net and to go into the net. I know some preachers said the fish was always there, but keep in mind it was morning. You understand what I'm saying? And if you study fish a little bit, like I have not, you would. <laughs> Confession is good, but at least I know that much that you, you wouldn't find them. Certain types of fish uh, during the daytime. So, so, so he knew, but Jesus, Jesus, see when you obey, when you say, Lord, at your word, when you say, nevertheless, at your word, when you say, God, in spite of, regardless of, it doesn't matter what it looks like, when you say those words to God, he will call whatever necessary, hallelujah, for you to receive it. It doesn't matter how it comes, but he will call and cause it to come to you. So Jesus got fish to come toward the net, but not only toward the net, he got fish to get into the net. So much so, until fish was climbing on top fish. Fish was trying to swim out of the way, but it couldn't because they were way down at the bottom pressed down, shaken together and running over you talk about fish that's what at your word when you can stand up and say Lord uh, uh, watch me, daddy daddy oh, nevertheless you set up yourself for abundance good measure pressed down shaken together and running over see this thing Instead of setting up yourself for failure. Instead of setting up yourself for doom. Setting up yourself for abundance. Say something that makes sense. Say something that God can identify with. Say, hey, daddy, nevertheless. And if you can remember that big word, Lord, at your word. No, because sometimes when you're, when you're going through a situation, uh, different types of situations, you get a little discombobulated. You know? You'll be like, um, Jesus, Holy Father Jesus, Lord God, and you're, you're trying to get something that you can identify with. So, if you can't remember those simple words, they can nevertheless. Oh, come on, I understand. Just say, Lord, at your word, I will do it. I will do it. Say, I will do it. I will do it. That's the objective today. I will do it. I will do it. See, we know he can command fish when we, we look at, and um, the fish will obey his voice. When we look at Jonah, he called, don't tell me that that, that whale was just there. And the whale, uh, not a whale, but a fish. It's because it said fish, not whale. And that big fish just was just there, chilling, waiting, saying, hmm. You know, the, 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 the sound of me. See, I don't know what fish are saying. Um, okay. Okay. Something like that. Something like that. And he, the fish was just there and saying, I smell Jonah. Jonah is on mm, his way. And waiting for Jonah just like right there. No, I don't think it was like that. Even the fish had to obey the voice of God. Amen. You know what amazed me with that though? A fish that size would have to swim in deep waters. You don't hear clearly when you're in deep waters. So God had to really shout it out or he had a, a specific signal to send to that fish. There are frequencies God will release in the atmosphere to cause whatever you need to align itself to come to you. Because I'm telling you, the fellas on the boat with Jonah would have heard Jesus' voice or God's voice saying, Fish, align. They heard nothing, but they were too scared to hear anyway, but but my point is, he's so cool though. He can talk to fish. We can talk too, and they'll swim away. Or if they're big enough, they'll come and eat you. I don't say we can't talk, we can talk. But when Jesus talks, when he speaks, the fish went, Lord, at your word. I will 
obey your word. Boom. Inside the net. And I, listen, they were so obedient. Some initially were trying to get out, but then when they realized it's like, wait, this thing nice here. We have real coin on here going on the fellowship for so fish on fish. We have bacon shark, they had fish and fish. And everything was aligned until the net was breaking. Listen to me, he loves you so much. That what you missed, you see, Peter didn't have experience. First, the beginning, he said, Take your nets. He went with net. Because I checked the versions, it was nets, and then he went with net. So it's like, Peter's like, All right, okay, here what God. Let's see what I can do for you. All right, take this. Don't you ever go short of what God has for you so that you cannot carry or her. Don't go with less. That's why the woman who had to, 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 to get the vessels for the oil, what God had for her, what she had was not enough. You got to go borrow if you have to. You got to go make an investment if you have to. You got to make sure that you have what it takes for him to be able to pour into you. So what do you need to have? You need to have a clean vessel, pristine. You need to be open. You need to be pliable. You need to be ready. You need to be sin free. You need to be righteous. You need to be holy because there's a lot he's poured on the inside of you. And the more he pours, it's the more Hallelujah, you're going to have overflowing. What you got overflowing that someone else could get? What do you have? Huh? If he can speak to the fish to ensure there's a finished work and the fish obeys, what, is, what has he said to you? That you are yet to obey. Peter and those guys, or Simon, before because he wasn't Peter yet. He didn't know anything about being a disciple just yet. So Simon, after a weary night, after washing his net, saw a miraculous thing take place before his eyes. His experience was overshadowed by the supernatural. The other verses, which we'll talk about next time, they, they, they had to call for help. And still the nets were breaking. Let me tell you something, what God has in store for you will break every barrier, will break every country, everything will break and you will still have to overflow. God has a plan for you and it's a good plan. Don't you dare give up. Don't you dare just leave your boat and wash your nets. Don't you dare just put your praise aside, put your worship aside. Don't you dare do that. Just lift your voices, everything inside of you and say, Lord, at your word, I will do it. Come on, say it over and over until it gets into your spirit. Spirit man, Raka Shandara Bosaya, Rebe Shandara Bosaya, Hallelujah! Hey! Right now, God, activate in your people and even those online. Activate God. Let there be a volcanic response. Show up! Show up! Show up! Show up! Let there be divine overflow. Give them supernatural strength. Lord, at your word, I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. Nevertheless, 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 I know what I know. I've experienced what I've experienced. I have knowledge. I have information. You know, I have a wealth of knowledge as a matter of fact. Yeah, just last night I went out. Let's, just last night. I, 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 I'm very skillful. So I knew exactly what I was supposed to do. Just last night I was at that location. Just last night I had the right bait. Just last night God and God said, get out of your night. Get out of your night. You don't even see clearly at night. You know what it is. For one season in your life, you have been catching, but never seeing the whole process. And then God elevates you. And now you're catching and you're seeing. 
You're seeing. Because at daytime the water will be clearer. And you're seeing that which God spoke coming to pass because he prepared them. He said, let it down for a catch. It was a done deal. Divine observation and divine intervention is what took place. Are you hearing me, somebody? Jesus spoke from a place of the finish. Divine provision was given. Unconditional love displayed. And when I keep looking at this, I'm like, you took him from a place of nothingness. Not to get some, but to get abundance. Because he said, nevertheless. You mean all I have to do is verbalize my obedience and then live it? Because not only did Simon verbalize it, he acted. So your verbalization is good, but it's not enough. Remember I said to you, we have a lot of people with good intentions. People live that way. I intended to do that, you know. Apostle, I intended to do this. I intended to do that. And I intend to do that. Or I intend to. Or I intended to. I intend to. I intended to. I intend to. And you never do it. Simon was intentional. He said, nevertheless, I will let down my name. Nevertheless, at your word. And we are saying today, God, Lord, at your word, we'll do it. We'll do it. You see, you must go one more time at his word. If you have to go back at all to where you once was, to where you were, you have to go at his word. Outside of that, you're just going into your past and you would get nothing. But when you go back to anything that you've left, whether it's temporary or permanently, and you go back at God's word, you're going back for what was left there. You're going back for the spoils. You're going back to collect what was always yours in the first place. You don't worry about it. The fish will come. Today, what you need is going to come. What you need must obey the voice of God. There is nothing that can override and overrule the voice of God for the purpose of your life. Do you understand what I'm saying? His plan and purpose is so vast for your life that everything that you need, he can speak to us, hey, align yourself. The victory will come. Launch out and let down your nets. In other words, go again, pray. Seek God's face. Fast, but I fasted already. Then fast again in the same place. Go again, but only at his word. Some people, and I keep saying this, you feel fasting gets you all spiritual. No, because you can fast all day and at night commit one of the biggest sins ever. Normal, normal. It's what happens is if you go at his word, if you understand that some things would go by prayer and fasting, if you understand if he says to fast and you fast, then you must see results. You just don't think about it's a holy and a spiritual thing to do. So you just, I'm going on a 21 day fast. Did you hear his voice? Did he speak to you? So all we would see is someone losing weight, looking miserable and then saying they're waiting on God to respond. And God, I never spoke to you. I never spoke to you. So although it looks like a spiritual thing to do, if it's not at his word, because Peter, um, Simon, was going to look very foolish, even more foolish. Not just going out, but coming back with nothing. But at God's word, once God speaks, you can't come back with nothing. You come back with abundance. Can I get somebody to agree? And then there are times when you have to know and you will hear the voice of God saying, don't wash your net yet. There are times, there are seasons when you say, don't wash it yet. As a matter of fact, don't get out of the boat just yet. Then there was a time when he told Peter, get out. There was a time when even while he was in the boat, when there was a storm, he stayed in. You have to understand seasons. You have to keep hearing the voice of God for your life. And stop going based on what someone else said. Stop going based on what someone else experienced. Out of the multitude, he said, Simon! Stop. The other fishermen had experience as well. 
It's not noted that they were probably saying to him, hey boy, where are you going? Sun hot, no fish. But can you imagine the humanistic aspect of them? Watching Simon, wanting to say or probably saying something. But as their experience, their time is going to come. When they saw the, the, the fish, I'm sure something shifted in their hearts. But at that point, God just said, Simon! Through his son, Jesus. And Jesus echoed Simon's name. That was straight from the throne room. Because God had an ultimate plan for Simon. Are you with me? So you must go one more time to the word. The fish will come. Victory will come. Launch out. Let down your net. Don't wash your net until he says it has to be at his word. So even after you've given up. Because <laughs> I looked at one and I said, God, but what about those times when I really, really wanted to throw in the towel? When I attempted suicide. What about those times? I said, I kept you because even after you gave up, Michelle. I was right there. And I want you to tell the people they can still expect divine intervention. They can still expect me to love them and move on their behalf because on their behalf because I see the why. I see the frustration, I see the tiredness, I see the, they're on the edge, I see, I see all of that, but I, my plan for them is greater than what I am seeing. That they are going through. That's why when the children of Israel cried out, he heard them. He also knew half of them were going to be so ungrateful and the earth was going to open and swallow them. He knew all of that, but he's given everyone the fair chance to just get it right. And not just to get it right, but to get their inheritance to get what is rightfully yours. Everyone has the same opportunity. In the midst of it. I was like, God, you forgave me for that. And you still wanted to use me. He said, yes. Because I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. I knew you before you were formed, Michelle. And my plan for you, I just want you to see it. My plan for you is greater than what you've been through. He's talking to somebody today. Sometimes I feel so undone. He still loves me. I watch him flow under the anointing. I just stood by certain people. I was able to communicate in the spirit realm. And I'm like, and you're still using me. I don't understand how precious that is for me, you know. I told someone recently, this is my life. You know, somewhere they say, take not that Holy Spirit from me, please. You could take anything else. Not God, not my relationship with God. That's why I don't authorize anyone to take this. You can't see the why. You can judge the what. But he takes care of the why. Because he loved me when I couldn't love myself. He kept me when I couldn't keep myself. Still can't keep myself. He's still here. And I'm here to tell somebody. It's the same with you. Because God sees and he steps in. So you can step out with his word. He sees. And he steps in. So you can step out with his word, with his word, and as at his word, <laughs> abundance comes in every area of your life. Lord, at your word, I will do it. I want to encourage somebody, don't give up. Don't give up. What sense does it make? You go through hell on earth, and then you spend eternity in hell, make some sense with your life. Make some sense with your life. Let's just be practical. Let's be real. Make some sense with your life. You've been through, okay, you've been through, but you're still here. There's an hour of victory. And it's now. Whatever you do, you must see God in it because he will see you through. God saw the multitude God saw Simon 
And I'm here to tell you, God sees you. God sees you. Yeah, you should show some gratitude unto him. Those of you online, God sees you. God sees you, yes you. So deconstruct your old and allow the construction of the new. For all the things have passed away and behold, all things have become new. Don't wait for tomorrow because now is all you have. Don't wait for next week, now is all you have. Don't put a time frame on your life because your life is not your own. Now is all you have. You got to check to see if Jesus is undeniably first in your life. Is he first? Not just seeking him first, you know. Is he first? You see, he has to be first so you can seek him first. Are you willing to accurately align yourselves with his word? Are you prepared for the manifestation of his power? Are you willing to accurately align yourself with his power and his presence? And be prepared. Are you willing? Lord, at your word, I will do it. I will do it. It's been a journey. We've been through a lot. But because you're God, you've kept us. <laughs> Even when we didn't deserve to be kept, you kept us. So we don't have much to say today, but nevertheless, we don't have much to say, but God, Lord, at your word, we'll do it. Just stand. Let's just stand. Lord, at your word. Lord, at your word, we will do it. We'll look at the other verses next Sunday as God allows. But for today, I want us to check ourselves for a minute, please. This is not the time to move around, walk around, and this is not break time. This is a time for you to get your breakthrough at the next level. With hands lifted high. Hands lifted high. Open your mouth. God used Simon. Oof, Jesus. As we will see when we go through the rest of the scripture. He used Simon to help others. Through Simon's obedience there was an overflow. What do you have to offer today? What are you saying to God? How can he use you my God? After all that he has done. How are you showing your gratitude after all that he has done? I mean, you've been through, yes, sir. And even now you're going through something. But the fact that you're alive to go through it, you can still say, thank you, God, that I'm still breathing. I don't like how I'm feeling. But at least I can thank you that I'm breathing. And there is hope for tomorrow. As you keep me in my today, as you brought me out of my yesterday. So Lord, at your word, I'll do it. And I believe God is talking to somebody here today. Right where you are, we're not going to make the altar call, although I sense it. But he's talking to somebody here today. And you have authorized things and people huh, to cause you to give up because you didn't get the catch. To cause you to bring the net closer to the shore so that you can wash it. And it's a sign of that's it. End of the day, the end of the night. It's a sign of, well, we didn't catch anything. We are finished. 
We have to leave it for another time. And God is saying no. While Simon was yet washing. Oh, Jesus. God spoke. God spoke. Because of his plan and purpose. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without me.